In this evening's Imperial Business Insights lecture, serial entrepreneur Luke Johnson will be discussing what makes a successful entrepreneur. I'm joined by Luke and Mike Wright, Professor of Entrepreneurship at Imperial College Business School. Luke, firstly, what inspired you to become an entrepreneur? The idea of freedom and independence, uh, the desire to control my own destiny, uh, a wish for autonomy, um, a desire to get the credit for my own efforts, um, a, uh, the excitement of creating something from scratch. And Mike, can you explain the difference between a portfolio entrepreneur and a serial entrepreneur and what bearing this can have on their success? I can try. <laughs> In front of Luke, who knows more about it than I do. Well, we see a serial entrepreneur in a strict sense as somebody who owns or starts a business sequentially. So perhaps opens one, sells it or fails or closes it. The portfolio entrepreneur is somebody who owns a set of businesses simultaneously and may add to them, may, may get rid of a few from time to time. And this difference is not just an academic difference. What we find from our research is that the performance and the behaviour of these entrepreneurs are actually quite distinct. Um, Luke, I would see very much as a portfolio entrepreneur in, in our way of thinking. Uh, and what we find is that the performance of the portfolio entrepreneurs tends to be greater on average, I'm talking about averages now, that on oh, average than the serial. Because uh, I, I think they, they learn in different ways. I think they're more entrepreneurial in, a, uh, in a, an idea sense and the way they go about things. And I think perhaps sometimes if they have a, so a venture that's not a success, then the way in which they learn is different. It's like one amongst a set of activities that doesn't work, where it's not quite as catastrophic perhaps as somebody who starts one business that fails and they've got nothing else to fall back on. So I think those factors are quite distinct uh, in the way in which entrepreneurs behave. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to hear, to hear Luke's views on that, actually. <laughs> Well, I think that distinction is correct. They are quite somewhat different beasts. Um, I think serial entrepreneurs can only do one thing at once because they're more obsessive. Um, they get very emotion invested in their business. And um, then if it does fail, it, is, it can be catastrophic. Um, and obviously because Generally speaking, entrepreneurial activities is quite a high risk um, thing. Failure is always a possibility. Um, there is an argument that portfolio entrepreneurs uh, are, are less likely to build huge breakthrough businesses that are as radical and and as, as uh, you know innovative because they divide their energies. And so the, the sort of uh, genius, perhaps, of the exceptional you know, focused entrepreneur isn't there in necessarily quite the same quantity. Mm -hmm. So you'll be going into more um, detail in your lecture, but just briefly, what do you think makes a successful entrepreneur? Energy, ambition, optimism, uh, self-discipline, um, Numeracy, uh, touch of creativity, touch of madness, <laughs> um, a, a desire for autonomy, um, uh, confidence, um, uh, quite often a, a, con a, a sort of contrarian personality. Um, A, a, a desire for risk and a desire for gain, egotism. Um, Mike, how do you think government can incentivise entrepreneurship? How long have we got? <laughs> I, think, I think you perhaps see this on, on two levels. I think one is incentivising it through setting the overall climate in which entrepreneurship can take place. Uh, and, and I think this, the second element is actually the more specific incentives or policy support mechanisms. So, so in policy support mechanisms it might be things like support for startups in either a financial or tax incentive sense, but I think what's also important is 
incentivizing entrepreneurship, not just to start a business, but actually to be able to grow that business. Because if, if, the, if the objective of, of a policy is actually to, to create wealth <coughs> in the economy, then it's really through the ventures that grow, not, not lots of startups that go nowhere. Mm. And so I think that has a, quite a different meaning for incentivizing. So I think some of that relates to not just tax incentives for finance, but, but I think it also, for example, has an incentives to encourage portfolio entrepreneurs to keep continuing investing. So maybe that's so not just putting limits on lifetime capital gains mm. and so on, but so well, let's encourage these guys who are successful because that's where the wealth can be. And maybe we encourage them to, to mentor novice entrepreneurs so that they actually can increase the value of their businesses. So it's a rather, so I take it a step further than some of the more traditional ways of just saying, well, let's help people just to start a business. I think that misses a whole lot of the point of why we should be incentivising, how we should be incentivising entrepreneurs. And Luke, you recently <coughs> co-founded and launched the Centre for Entrepreneurs. Um, what support is available to novice entrepreneurs and how will this new think tank help them further? Well, actually, compared to the past, I would argue that there's reams of support of different types for uh, novice entrepreneurs, from advice and mentorship to uh, an incredible array of information and knowledge online, um, to probably more different pockets of money in various ways than ever before, to a lot, I think, these days of moral support, um, I can't recall a period when there was more overall sort of societal and political interest in entrepreneurship and, mm. and the idea of startups and doing your own thing. And I think that cultural support is very important, actually. Our think tank is designed to research entrepreneurship and understand uh, why people become entrepreneurs, why some are particularly successful. Um, how society perhaps can encourage more entrepreneurs. So it's, it's firstly about research, and then secondly it's about education, I think, in terms of trying to educate uh, politicians, educate the media, educate the public, into the importance and the impact that entrepreneurs have in terms of wealth creation, tax generation, innovation, job creation, and so forth. So uh, it's got those two principal aims. We are not, I'm chair of something called Startup Britain, for example, which is a more direct grassroots organisation designed to offer specifically to startups um, advice and you know, direction in terms of uh, places they can go to find out how to you know, get a loan or uh, uh, obtain a mentor or whatever. Uh, so I would say that Startup Britain is more the everyday uh, place for uh, novice entrepreneurs to go. I think Central Entrepreneurs is, is meant to be a think tank, um, and uh, that's our ambition. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, Mike, the Innovation Entrepreneurship um, and Design course is the core component of the Imperial MBA programme. How does this course encourage entrepreneurship? Well, it sits within uh, the, the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Group. And within our group, we also have a, an Enterprise Research Centre, which is actually quite complementary, I think, to, to Luke's Centre, because the part of what we do gets to the policy influence think tank. A lot of more core activities are academic research with a, a practical and policy relevance. So we use that kind of research as an input partly into this course, uh, as well as more practical hands-on aspects. So the, the course itself is, is basically uh, an entrepreneurial journey. So we're taking students who may eventually want to start their own business, or they may not, but with the view that if they go into corporations, they may increasingly be called upon to be more entrepreneurial. So we're inculcating the kind of skills that entrepreneurs will need. So it's not just a business plan preparation, it's actually inculcating thinking like an entrepreneur, how you actually create and identify opportunities, because sometimes we perhaps forget that in a business plan preparation course, and then taking that through in a very practical way, 
to a series of uh, coaching sessions through to the end product, which is actually the presentation to your practitioners, who include financiers, who will then form a view on whether this is backable or not. Uh, and so it's, so it's quite a good learn, hands-on learning experience. It qu quite well complements the, co the class-based learning that we'll get in the other traditional courses on the MBA. So they come out with quite a strong tool as the idea to to take forward if they're going to create a business or become entrepreneurial in a in a corporate setting. Okay, thank you. Um, and Luke, what advice would you give Imperial College business students thinking of starting their own business? Well, apart from the obvious one of do it, find a partner, and don't give a personal guarantee. Perfect, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>